In this video I'm going to show you how to do a break-even analysis using an equation. You can also do a break-even analysis using a graph which we'll look at later. A break-even analysis looks to find the number of units or number of products that a business needs to sell in order to start making a profit. If a business doesn't sell enough products then their profits will be negative, they'll be losing money. Once they reach a certain point called the break-even point, their profits will be zero. The amount that they spend will be the, amount as, uh, the same amount as they're receiving. Beyond that point, the business will start to make a profit. So it's important to know at what point will I need to break even. And if a business thinks that they will not be able to sell that many products, then they shouldn't go ahead with that product. Before we look at the break-even analysis, we want to look at the parts that, uh, that make up the equation. The first one is fixed costs. These are the costs that don't change as the amount that the business produces changes. They uh, will stay the same regardless of what the production level is. So some examples are rent, advertising, uh, interest on loans, insurance. There's lots of others, but these are just some examples. So if we just look at, at rent for an example, if a business doesn't sell any products on a particular day, they don't get a discount on their rent. The, the person who owns the premises doesn't say, well, you had a bad day today, so I'll lower your rent for today. In the same way, if they have a really good day, the owner of the building doesn't say, you need to pay me extra rent because you had extra sales. So it doesn't matter how many products they sell, the rent stays the same, and the same with some of these other examples. So that, of course, leads us to variable costs. And these are the things that which do change uh, with an increase in the amount of the products which are being produced or sold. The best example of a variable cost is raw materials. The more products that I make, the more, the more raw materials that I need to purchase in order to make them. So therefore, they will increase in value with an increase in the amount of uh, the products that I sell. And again, there's lots of examples of variable costs, but some other examples are wages and transport. Obviously, wages are only for workers who are involved in the production process. So if I have to pay overtime hours or uh, bring in a new worker because I'm producing more, then that's variable. If I have staff who are on a salary who get paid the same regardless, they, those wages would actually count as fixed costs. So once we know our variable costs and our fixed costs, we should find it fairly easy to work out the break-even point. And I think if I was to give a really simple example, uh, such as I had $100 in fixed costs, and uh, so that's my fixed costs, I had uh, a product which I purchased from a business for $2, and then, so that's how much it cost me, and because obviously if I sell more of those, then it goes up in value. So that's going to be my variable cost is going to be $2 per unit. And then if I sold this product for $4, so that's my selling price. I think that most people would be able to look at that and say, well, every product that I sell, I make $2 worth of profit. So I would need to sell 50 of them in order to cover this $100 in fixed costs. So we can put this into an equation where the break-even point equals total fixed costs divided by the selling price minus the variable cost. So this selling price minus the variable cost, that's equal to how much profit you make on each unit. Okay, so profit per unit. Uh, that would give us the, uh, the break-even point. So I'm going to look at this example where my fixed costs are $100. I sell a product for $8, which costs me $4 to buy. If I just put those numbers into this equation, I get that my total fixed costs were $100. My selling price was $8. And my variable cost per unit was $4. That's 100 divided by 4. And that means I would need to sell 25 units in order to break even. If I sell less than 25 units, I actually make a loss. If I sell more than 25 units, I start to make positive profit on this particular product. 
And just to finish up, I want to look at this particular example, uh, just to highlight one area that you need to know when we're doing break-even analysis. So in this example, my fixed costs are $100, I sell the product for $8, and it costs me $5 to buy that product. Again, I just put these numbers into the equation. My total fixed costs were 100 my selling price was $8, and it cost me $5 to buy each product. So that equals 100 on 3, and that equals 33.3. .3. Now, here's the important thing. Uh, a lot of people would say, well, I could round that down and say that my break-even point, the number of products I need to sell, is 33. And that's incorrect, because when I sell 33 products, I haven't yet broken even. I'm still making a loss if I sell 33 products. It's not until I've sold the 34th product that my business actually breaks even. So I always have to round up. I can never round down. If the answer is 33.3, then my break even point is 34 units. Now, in most cases, uh, the numbers won't be that small, they won't be that simple. So we might look at a more realistic example. It's more likely to look like this, that uh, in order to launch a new product, it's going to cost me uh, $15,800 for a product that I sell for $8.50, and the variable cost per unit of me to make this product is $4.20. So that's going to come out as uh, 15800 on $4.30, and that equals uh, 3674.4. So in order to break even, when I've sold 3674 products, I'm still 0.4 of a product away from breaking even, so I'm still making a loss. I don't break even until... I've sold 36,075 products. So that is my break-even point for this product. So that's how you do a break-even analysis using the break-even equation, which is the total fixed cost divided by the selling price minus the variable costs. Just a reminder that fixed costs are those ones which don't change. Uh, with a change in the level of production, and those variable costs are the ones that do change. And raw materials is the best example of that. You can also do a break-even analysis using an equation, and there'll be a separate video about that.